had um, my life was full of beliefs. All of our lives are full of beliefs, right? We pick up all these beliefs from childhood. Most of our beliefs and the way we handle emotions comes from age like seven, right? Kind of seven's where it's solidified. And then our brain really quits fully developing by the time we're 35. But like how we deal with emotions and emotions comes from that like five, six, seven year old. And what's crazy about that is how you are currently emotionally experiencing the world is how your seven version, seven year old version self did. What? Like most of us think that we're adults, right? And we're doing adult things and we're functioning as adults, we're making adult decisions. But in terms of how we process emotion, handle emotion, and deal with emotion, it comes from that seven year old version of you. Which is just crazy because there's no way we would let a seven year old navigate our lives. And here's where it gets even more like important to understand this stuff is that our beliefs create our outcomes. Here's a different way. Our beliefs create our reality. It creates the results in our life. What we believe is how we take in information. It's how we take that information and process it. It's what we believe the world should be like, right? It's how we show up in the world. So you see people that believe that they are worthy and that they are enough and they're very self-confident. And they go after things because they believe they can have those things, that they're worthy of those things, that they're capable of doing those things. And then you see people that have beliefs that they are not worthy and that they're not enough. And they constantly are getting in their own way, self-sabotaging, not risking, fear of risk, not willing to fail, right? Kind of staying in their comfort zones. So you can see just through those examples alone, how our beliefs do create and change the tra trajectory of our lives. So why are we functioning out of these seven year old beliefs that we created to do our lives with? And I think the answer to that is that we don't know. We don't know what we don't know, right? And I firmly believe that humans will do better when they know better. Right? I tell myself all the time, you know better, so you have to do better. You know it. So you, there's no going back and pleading ignorance or I just didn't know or making excuses. Like, I do know, so therefore I have to do better. And that's just so true in human nature because if you have ever, I'm an athlete, always been an athlete, so I love athletic analogies. But if you've ever been an athlete, when your coach, Speak something in and you believe it. Like, Kim, I really think that you can average 12 points a ball game. I'm just making up a number here, okay? And if he sets that bar 12 points a ball game, guess what my human nature is going to do? My human nature is going to make sure because I believe him, I trust him, what he has to say. He's an adult, he's my coach, I trust what he has to say. He believes I can do that. I'm going to then create that result and I'm going to score 12 points a ball game, right? I'm going to figure out how to get it done. So I will rise to the bar that he sets me. But if he comes back on me in a few months and is like, yeah, I really think that you could up it and go to 16 points a game. If I believe him and trust him, he's raised the bar, I will come up to meet that bar. That's just human nature, right? If someone sets the bar really low, like Cam, I think it's just like two points a game. I think that's what you can do. That's even though I'm capable of getting those 16 points a game, I will only come to his bar of the two points because then I'm agreeing with him and believing the beliefs that I can only get two points a game and that's what I'm going to create in my life. So that's why I believe when humans know better, they will do better. It's just our nature to continue to rise up to the bar that's set for us. And 
And so that's why I got into coaching. It's because it changed my life, right? Like my bar was here. I had all these beliefs from childhood, a lot of self-limiting beliefs that I wasn't worthy. I wasn't enough. Really, really that was the one. Worthy kind of sprinkled in there, but that I wasn't enough. And that came from childhood. And that doesn't mean it has to be blamed on my parents, right? Because I also have this belief that people do the best they can do. They do. They just show up 100% them. I'm the best Kim that I can, Kim can be. Kim is 100% Kim. And I'm doing the best I can. And sometimes people's best they can is not very good. We can all agree on that. But still they're doing the best they can. And when they know better and they learn better, they'll do better. But they're just doing the best they can with whatever skills and tools they had. So when we give that to our parents, like, look, like, there's not a manual in parenting. And maybe my parents didn't know better, right? And they just parented to me how their parents parented them. Or, you know, maybe um, my parents gave it 100%. And that was, you know, that, that was their 100%. I love what I, I learned recently. And that was that most parents love their kids just 100%. They love their kids. Most parents will die for their kids. They love them so much, they're going to die for their kids. Okay? So if we can kind of keep that in context that... Our parents just loved us. They loved us so much they probably would have died for us. But that doesn't mean that they did a perfect job because there is no perfect parent. There isn't. Your parents weren't perfect. My parents weren't perfect. You're not the perfect parent, nor will you ever be, and that's okay. Your kids won't be a perfect parent. Like they're... There is no perfection unless you see perfection in that we are 50-50. We are 50% beautiful and good. And we are 50% a mess. Terrible? Bad? Selfish? Yeah. We're 50-50. We're all of us are half this. And that's where our perfection lies. We are perfect and that we are 50-50. And so if we are 50-50, we're never going to be the perfect parent. Unless you consider parenting to be 50-50. 50% good, 50% not so good. And that's where the perfection lies. And so I had all these beliefs from growing up that I just, I gathered, right? Like something would happen, I would get in trouble, and I would believe like, oh, when I don't do these things right, I get in trouble then I must not be good enough because a good enough kid, a good enough little girl would do everything perfectly and she would not ever get in trouble. So then I took this sub evidence that I found and created a belief. A belief is simply a thought that you have thought over and over and over again and now it becomes a belief. And a belief is how we define and describe reality as out of our own beliefs. And so I had these beliefs that were very limiting, money beliefs especially. Um, and I wanted more money in my life. I had just come off a divorce, very toxic relationship, loved that man, but together we were terrible. Lots of verbal, emotional abuse going on. Both of us. Um, so I just came off a divorce, moved from my beloved state of Colorado back to Oklahoma where my parents are, was living with my parents, and I, I just knew I wanted something more for my life. Here was my chance to recreate a new life. And I was reading Jen Sincero's book, You Are Badass at Making Money. And she just kept preaching, like, you need a coach, you need a coach, you need a coach. If you want to be successful, you got to get a coach. Okay, I never heard of coaching or knew anyone that did so I of course like most of us found a podcast and I found the life coach school podcast and I loved I fell in love with Brooke and I joined her self coaching scholars program and I was there for a very long time um, almost a year and a half and I just did the work every day and it changed my life what Brooke taught me changed my life 
because I could start changing those beliefs. I could start pulling those beliefs from the unconscious, seeing them, deciding if I wanted to keep those beliefs. They're all subjective interpretation to reality. There is no factual thing. I never saw hard, tangible thing that told me I wasn't enough. I had circumstances in my life that were neutral that I took those circumstances and I interpreted on my own to create a belief that I wasn't good enough. So if I created that belief, then I can dismantle that belief and create a new belief that I am enough and that I am worthy. And so that's really why I got into coaching as I saw the value and how it changed my life. How it took this woman that was riddled with depression and anxiety and self-doubt and self-hatred and hatred towards the world and wanted more and wanted better and just kept self-sabotaging and turned her into this woman today that sees the world as this beautiful place and sees humans for their beauty and potential and their perfectness in this mess. And this woman that no longer suffers from depression or has thoughts of suicide, that can see things from a much more positive perspective, experience happiness and love and joy. A woman that now can dream so big and believe that she can go get it. So they're not just dreams anymore, fantasies, if you will, to help me check out of my world. They're actual dreams that are capable of being achieved life-changing. It's life-changing. When you can manage your own emotions and you don't feel subject to the world and what all the world's pushing at you and you can just stand strong in who you are and know if I want to feel this, I'm going to feel it, but I don't have to. I don't have to feel all these things, the anxiety, the tension, the stress. I get to choose it. And like, how can I not share that with the world? How can I not show up and help serve people and coach you guys one-on-one -on -one to change your thoughts and beliefs, to get what you want in your life, to finally overcome those hurdles, to finally overcome yourself, to finally dismantle these beliefs that have been holding you back for so long, these beliefs that won't let you lose the weight, that won't let you change jobs, that won't let you find the relationship you want, that won't let you have the money that you want. I cannot stand by and not let people suffer like that and not contribute not give back by offering to coach you guys one-on-one -on -one or by teaching. So that's why I became a coach, to serve, to help people make the changes they want to so they don't have to suffer needlessly anymore.